Hey you guys, how you doing? Today I received a question from a fellow YouTuber and he asked me about Darktable styles. And I realized, hey, I've been meaning to talk about this, so you know what? Today is as good a time as, as any. So why don't we take a quick look at what styles are? I'm going to give you a very quick introduction. And I'm going to show you the basic style that I apply to all of my images before I start doing any other edits. So, the first thing we are going to look at is what are styles exactly. Styles live down here in this menu, or if you go to the light table, you can see here that um, you have a styles menu down here, where the styles that you have saved are available to you. A style is a collection of different actions that is, can be done on an image and you can save them as basically a batch processing type of thing where you save a style and then when you call up the style in an image then the style, all of the um, parts of the style are going to get applied. So for instance I have a style here that makes uh, an image look like the movie 300. Right? So you can see in the history stack now that a couple of modules have been executed. That's all the modules that were saved inside the style and um, you know the settings that are in those modules. I'm going to show you what I do when I start retouching an image. Now let's say we start out with this image which was shot at ISO 8000 and even the Canon EOS 6D which is a camera that I adore has some trouble when you get to high ISO values like 8000 and 10,000. If you look here you're going to see that there's a whole bunch of grain in this image. So that's one thing we want to take care of and then another thing is this image could pop a little more. Why don't we start with that? So we could go to the equalizer and we could just select the clarity preset and we can see now the image has a uh, stronger contrast between uh, a stronger local contrast but I think it's a little bit too strong for my taste so I'm going to turn the mix down a little let's say to 0 0.5 and you can see now that you know the image has gained a little bit of depth a little bit of plasticity and that's a nice thing you know that's something we can have on all our images because you know why the hell not but also, if we apply this, we're going to see that the grain starts coming out a little more than it used to be. So that's not ideal, I think. So the next thing we should do is start some denoise actions. First thing we can do is we're going to create a new instance of the equalizer and we're going to use the denoise preset that is available in the equalizer. And you can see, if you look closely, there's a slight little bit of grain that, um, you know, got removed here. So a little bit of denoising is already going on. But you can also see that it's really not a lot that's going on. So the next thing we want to do is look at some more denoise modules that are specifically made for this. One that I personally like is the non-local means module but if you use it with the uh, default settings you will see that yes the noise disappears here but also detail disappears and it starts looking a little bit like a bowl of cereal that you forgot to eat yesterday. I don't want to have that kind of blur and, and glob in there so what we're going to do is we're gonna take away a little bit of the effect the luma effect is the effect that um, where the the brightness and uh, of the noise gets affected. Um, what I want to leave is the chroma, where basically it works on the color of the noise, but it doesn't, um, you know, like affect the brightness so much that it becomes it becomes a blur. The strength we can we might as well go up a little. We can go up to 100%. And now if we look at this area down here, and we turn this off and on, we can see that the noise is already getting a little bit better. Right? So that's the next one. We have our denoise local means, and this is the setting that we have here. Another one that I recently started using is the denoise profile, which is pretty cool because it finds a match for the ISO that you're already using in an image. And if you activate it, it's going to get rid of more noise. But again, I think it's coming on a little bit strong. I don't want it to be that strong. I want these things to work in a really subtle way. I found that the wavelets look a little bit nicer. But first of all, right away, if we do this, yeah, then it becomes a blur again over here, like his jacket, losing detail, right? 
so it's a little bit much so let's leave the weight wavelets but let's change the way we blend this we're gonna say uniformly and we're gonna say not normal but we just want to blend by color again there we go and again now this profile only works uh, this this module only works on the color of the noise but not on the noise itself like at least not as much so what we have achieved here is that we get rid of the whole oil painting stuff that was going on and we have some pleasing grain left in, in the image but we don't have that this this weird color noise anymore so that's exactly what we want now if I zoom in here a little we can see that the noise has changed a lot it's still there but it's no longer this this ugly color noise right so these three modules combined give us a very nice effect on fixing the noise in an image. I use these by default on any image, even if it's shot at low ISO. Um, sometimes it, I feel like the denoise profile is a little bit too much, so I just uh, apply the style, but then I uh, manually just disable the denoise profile. The last thing we want to do is any camera that you use for a while after a few months is just going to develop dead pixels. It's just the way it is. Sometimes, depending on the image, these dead pixels are going to be highly visible, like just as red dots in the middle somewhere in the image. Uh, sometimes, like in this image, you don't really see them. But why not get rid of hot pixels by default? So we have this wonderful hot pixels module. Pretty much all you need to do is to just turn it on and let it do its magic. You can select Detect by Three Neighbors if your camera is doing really badly and now you no longer have hot pixels in the image. Okay, so here's what we just did. We applied the, all these really nice things. We did an equalizer, we did some denoising, right, and then we applied a hot pixel thing and you know if you flip through your images you're gonna see ah you know what I want the same thing to apply to this image and this image and this one as well and you know what why don't I apply this to all images and that's where as we discussed earlier the styles come in because you can just pick this and then you just say I want to save this as a style so you go here create new style you call it EQ plus denoise plus hot pixels for instance you can call it whatever you want and then you say what actions do I want to include in this style and you pick these ones that we just did together right um, there we, you don't need the base curve because that's something Darktable does to you by default and you save it I'm not going to save this now because I actually already have a style that does this for me but now you go to the next image and you can go here to your styles and here's the style that I always use EQ plus denoise plus hot P and you're gonna see right away there the local contrast has enhanced a bit and the noise is less obviously <laughs> the noise is not really visible right now but you know if you were to zoom in you would see that the noise has been improved a little and this makes your workflows a whole lot simpler and a whole lot more efficient because you can just pick your style and you can apply anything you want to that picture. In order to preserve your styles after you, you know, for instance, format your hard drive or something, you can export a style. So you just select your style here in the light table module and you say, I want to export it. Let me see, what did that work? I'm just going to export it to the test directory. There we go. Style EQ plus denoise plus hot P was successfully saved. You're going to end up with a file that has the extension .dt style, like this one. So, in order to um, make things easy for you, if you like the style that I just did, if you like to use these um, actions for yourself, you can go to dtstyle.net, where just about five minutes ago I uploaded that very style. If you look for um, EQ plus denoise plus hot, plus hot pixels on dtstyle.net, you're going to find the style that I just showed to you and you can download it for yourself. Since I just did it five minutes ago, um, right now as I'm recording this video, it's not yet available, but I'm pretty sure if you watch this video, I don't know, tomorrow or something, you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to download this style along with all these other cool styles that are available. There's a crap load of styles on this okay you can see um, 
they're showing you like basic pictures up here and then for all of these styles here they're going to show you how they're going to affect the picture so for instance the cool 300 style that we looked at earlier is this one right the 300 look I think it's actually another one that I'm looking for yeah there's a couple of these okay but uh, I think this is the 300 that I was using on my picture a little bit earlier so you can see here's the standard here's the default picture and here's how the frog looks after he's been 300ified so you can pick any styles you like here and download them use them import them in uh, in Darktable just by using the import function you select the file and then you can start applying them to your images and you can use them to learn a couple of new tricks simply by uh, checking how other people applied these styles and created these kinds of ideas and effects like this for instance looks really amazing right or how about this vignette type of effect how is this done you just download the style you import it in dreams the uh, in Darktable you apply it and you look at uh, your history stack after you do it and you know you just uh, you're going to be able to find out some really cool things here we go all right check out the history stack and check out the settings in the modules and you're going to be happy so that's basically it for styles i hope this helps you a little bit um get deeper into dark table and work a little bit more efficiently if you have any questions or if you have any comments feel free to leave me a note in the comments below and we will talk soon thank you bye